I've just seen the quotes that says Firmino's injury is a serious hamstring injury. Can you just give us an idea of what serious means and just how big a blow? Yeah. <laughs> Losing Bobby Firmino is a, is a blow. I've, I don't have, think I have to verify it and say exactly how it's, it's a blow. So, um, but that's how it is. We know now already for two, three days that it's a serious injury. And so that means it's, it's still, we talk about, um, yeah, weeks still. And well, what is it? I don't know exactly, but more than four which um, I would consider as a, a serious injury. Um, and then we have to see, it's Bobby, he's a quick healer and all that kind of stuff. So I don't want to, um, it's just, a, usually when you have an injury before the international break and you think, okay, after the national break, they, they are ready again, then you take that. That is not the, directly the, the, the moment when Bobby will be ready again, probably. So that's not good. Um, what was the other question? Sorry. Uh, no, and uh, well, just tell us, Gomez and Curtis Jones don't make it either. Uh, are they they'll be available for you post your uh, post international break. Do you think? With with Curtis, I'm sure the Curtis is a very very weird one. So um, it was in training, and he got a normal challenge, got a finger scratched his eye a little bit, and um, and all of a sudden, yeah. The mess was there, um, so he is. Uh, I think on the, he is on a good way and a way back, but he's just not allowed to train a moment. But he will be back after the international break, and enjoy hopefully soon after international. Yeah. Okay. Um, anyone else? I I I, I don't know. No, that's it. Probably uh, Hopefully not. <laughs> um, so many good things from your performance in midweek. You said it was very near perfect. Was Simicus's, um form particularly pleasing? And how close do you feel he is for pushing Annie Robertson for that starting place now? <laughs> um, yeah, when I, when I speak about a nearly perfect performance, I mean, I mean, in the circumstances. So it's a group stage game we have to get through. And it's crucial we have to win the game. Obviously, we, we won it. We were tuning up. We had to have our one man down. Uh, we still had our chances. In the end, it looks like we cannot play against 10 men, but we had massive chances. So that because we didn't score anymore, but we had massive chances, bigger chances probably before than um, the ones we, we scored off. And so that was all fine. If we score them, then it's nicer, of course, and it much, sounds much more spectacular. But we control the game. They had one, one goal, a deflected one, which was then disallowed. So it was good defending, actually, the, the, the set piece that he was offside. Um, so that was all good, but of course, then Bobby out, that's not good. And that's why I said nearly perfect, but for a night like this with the, 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 the quality and the, and the strength, what, what, um, Atletico can provide, um, if they are on top of their game, we have to say we, we really didn't allow them. And that's the, that's the most important thing in a game like this. So that's a, a, a that was really class. And that's why I was so pleased with the performance. Um, we played better games. We played for longer periods, really good in the games and stuff like this. But for that night, in that in these circumstances, it was really, really good. Costas yeah, is 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 very close because um, all the players on the bench, uh, well, they're not starting. They are very close. That's why they are on the bench and not not in the squad, for example. Um, and Costas obviously a lot of quality. But I, what I just don't like about these kind of things that we they're always so early. What does it mean? Push Andy Robertson? He pushed Andy Robertson. He's doing that. But Andy Robertson is in my in my view eyes probably the best left back in the world. So. Um, that makes it really tricky, but it's good that we have the option that we can Robo can give Robo a rest in moments, um, even when he doesn't like it and doesn't need it in his understanding. But you need these quality players. When you have the on the quality player like Costas Simikas, then you have to let him free from time to time. You cannot just use that. He had a long time, but he needed to adapt to all the things we do. But that's this process is done now, um, and he's obviously a really good football player. And we are really happy to have him. And just finally from me, West Ham on the weekend. How impressed have you been with them this season? And a word on David Moyes hitting a thousand last night. Pretty incredible, isn't it? And he gets obviously better and better and better, how I see it. Um, that's possible, obviously, even after 999 games. Um, you can have still space for improvement. And, and, and Moyes did it in... 
I don't know if he reinvented himself again or whatever. That's his, I, I don't know him long enough for that, obviously, but um, it's absolutely incredible. And I, I, honestly, it's, it's really good what West Ham is doing. I think everybody who watched them sees that. That's a, that's a, a high energetic team, meanwhile. That's a, a counter-pressing team, meanwhile. They have counter-attacking, but playing as well. So there were always like moments in the past when you played West Ham, they defended deep, and then we had to be really aware of set pieces and counter-attacks. Now it's a full package, absolute full package, and they stay rightly so um, really high in the table and uh, have obviously, obviously top of the table of the European League group as well. I watched the game last night completely. And Gang did obviously a good job. They, they were they were nasty, they were um, um, brave and all that kind of things. But um, in the end, I was lucky to get a point and they and um, with a lot of changes it was not the first lineup we will face um, at, um, at on Sunday um, they still played how I would consider me by the West Ham football eh? so that was all there what you need and it could rest then um, Antonio from a specific moment on for miles didn't start Susek didn't start and all these things um, so they are in a good moment that will be a really good game, I'm pretty sure. We are in a good moment, they are in a good moment. That's how a football game should be before, or should it be before a game. And um, I'm really excited to play it. Um, it's a little bit tough one, but thank God for them as well. Thank you. Okay, we'll go to Olivia for two, and then we'll go to James from the BBC. Hi, Jürgen, how are you? Hi, I'm good, thank you. Good. Um, I think everyone was talking about a three-way title race. I think people still are talking about a three-way title race. You've spent significantly less as a club than, than Manchester City and Chelsea over the last few seasons. Do you consider yourselves underdogs in this season's title race? <laughs> Can I? Um, I don't, I'm not sure. It's we, are. We, we don't consider ourselves at all like saying who we are. We, we, we want to be in it, uh, whichever role we have there. I don't care too much. Um, but I think with the quality we have, we should be uh, in around the top of the table. So and that's where we are and that's where we, where we have to be. That's the responsibility we have and um, that's how we see it ourselves. So, um, yeah, we don't have to talk about too much about the quality of Manchester City. We don't have to talk too much about the, the quality and depth of, of Chelsea. And, um, and obviously, we are, we are not too bad a team as well. So that's cool. But there are so many, there are so many other good teams. Meanwhile, in that league, I think the league made a big, a big jump again. So, like we spoke, we play West Ham. West Ham is incredibly strong. Meanwhile, Brighton is incredibly strong. They were not only against us; they were against City as well. So, Tottenham is obviously now almost um, 100 coming back. Arsenal is a much better moment than they were last year. Um, United is obviously um, a, a top class team. So Leicester is there. So look at the, the, the league is absolutely incredible. Um, and there's no game where you, where you go, no game at, at all anymore, where you go and think, yeah, you can rest him or him or him. And that's absolutely impossible. You have to be on your absolute top constantly. And that makes it the best league in the world. And I'm not sure it was always in the last years the best league in the world, but I think in the last two, three, it was for sure the best league. And it makes it really exciting to be part of. And you mentioned all those other teams there. Does that put pressure on you, do you think, to not drop game, not drop points in consecutive games? Also, I know obviously you beat Atletico in um, midweek and that was obviously a great performance and result, but because there's so many teams in and around there, is it important that you follow up that draw against Brighton with a win against a very good side? Yeah, that's the plan, actually. Um, but are we under pressure from that? If you see like that, yes, but everybody's under pressure like that. So um, it's, 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 that's, that's how it is. If you want to stay in the league, you are under pressure. If you want to um, not getting involved in the relegation battle, you are under pressure and you cannot waste any opportunity to, to win a football game. And it's for us exactly the same. We fight for, for the Champions League spots. That's what we do. Um, and if you are in there, that means you probably can fight at least this year, then you can fight for the title as well. So that's how it looks in a moment, but nobody knows how that will look after the most intense period um, again of our lives in late November until um, January, which you all know is an absolutely crazy schedule and you have to get through all these kind of things. So yes. Um, I don't see it now already like, like a consecutive challenge, if you want. So like we draw and then we have to win. We wanted to win against Brighton and we want to win against West Ham. That's clear. But we know exactly how difficult it will be. OK, thank you. Uh, we'll go to BBC Press Association and Neil Jones. Conscious we've got two breakouts, so we'll see if these require follow-up. But James, you're on first. 
Hi there, Jürgen. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, can I just uh, just ask you about injuries again, please? Uh, Naby Keita and James Milner, how, how long are they expected out for? Look, that's the guys we, we forgot, by the way, because they are out, of course, as well. Um, yeah, we, we will see. I, I, for them, I, ho I have hope for after international break, but um, I, I don't know exactly. So we have to okay. wait. That's two, that's two and a few days, two weeks and a few days from now on. So that's what I uh, would really wish for, but I cannot promise that. But um, that's what we're working on. Just wanting a captain, please, from me. Um, the next start Jordan Henderson makes will be his 300th Premier League appearances, which puts him in a pretty select group. I just wonder, when you came to the club, he was already captain, but what was it about him that persuaded you to make him your captain? My last issue when I came here was thinking about who could be captain of this group. I had one. I met Hendo, spoke to him. He couldn't play that time. He was not fit. And it was absolutely, I spoke to people and there was nobody who told me, nah, I'm not sure about Hendo as a captain. They were all completely convinced he's the right one. But I couldn't say that in that moment because I only learned um, about him day by day. Um, and meanwhile, I can say um, after six years working with him together, perfect choice. <laughs> um, somebody else made, I think Brandon probably, um, or Stevie, whoever it was. And um, so it's a, it's a perfect, it's a perfect role model for, for a footballer, is a, is a real leader. Um, and on top of that, what's really important for, for, for a leader is that you don't want to have it only by yourself, you have to share it. You're a really good one, and that's what the boys do. Um, Millie is a massive, a massive voice in this team. Um, Virgil grew in that in that position as well. So now the next generation pretty much is coming with Trent and um, Robo. Ali is a very calm asset to all to all of all these kind of things. Mo obviously is a natural leader as well. So we have a, a, a top group there. So thank God Tando has not to do it alone, but he is the captain of this team, and um, that's. Maybe in the first moment when you become a captain, it's, it's a nice thing. You think, oh my God, I wear the armband for Liverpool. And from that moment on, it becomes a proper job because there are a lot of things to do. You have to do as a captain what you wouldn't have to do if you are not the captain. And um, yeah, but he fills the role in a perfect way. I'm really happy about that. Thank you. Then we go to Carl and we'll finish with Neil. And then we go to the first uh, embargo section to the guys who are going to put their hands up for that. If you do so now, but I can't take everyone. I'll take as many of you as I can. So fire away, Carl. Hey, Egan. Alex, Alex Ockley's Chamberlain has been talking this week about getting some rhythm and, and that helping him to get back to his best. And I know he's had a, a difficult couple of years, but how important will sort of that consistency and a, a bit of a run in the side be for him and for the team, considering the, the midfield options you have available at the moment? Massive, massive. Um, I thought it was a really good game. Um, he played a really good game now against Atletico, very mature. Um, he had his... Oxley Chamberlain moments, going with the ball, all that kind of stuff. But we need um, Mr. Oxley Chamberlain as well. Um, the mature one, the, the calm one, the, 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 the closing one, and all these kind of things. And so, yeah, it was a really good game. We had, we had a proper talk before the game about that, what we expect, and, and stuff like this. And he fulfilled the role really well. I was really happy for him. And that's how you get a rhythm then. If you play like this, then you will, it will not last too long until you play again, and all these kind of things. So that's how it is. Is it just a problem? Is it you? You say that there's almost two sides to him. Is it is it preferable to have those two sides to him, or would you prefer to have one over the other, or is it that's just his skill set? Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. I think that's neat, and it, it, Oxley has that. The problem is when you don't play for a long time and you do, are constantly in the situation that you think you have to convince people, then it's probably more the the speed, the speed ups and stuff like this. And speed ups, they, they are brilliant, but there's not there's not always a space there for that. And that's why I was so happy for him that he really could mix it up for that. Of course, we need both. And we have usually both, but when he didn't play for a long time, then it's like this, try to overachieve pretty much in a game. It's, it's not a bit the case. And it was now really in a very positive, positive way, a relaxed performance, but um, extremely helpful for the team. Thank you, Carl. We'll finish the open section with Neil Jones, and then I've got the three up. Probably can take in the open, so hopefully uh, that's enough for now. But we'll go to uh, Neil uh, for the closing of the open section. Neil. Hi, Egan. You mentioned about David Moyes there and how he's sort of got better and better. I mean, we've always associated him, maybe rightly or wrongly, with being a very strong defensive sides, the teams he manages. But 
they seem to have a lot more attacking threats West Ham than, than they have maybe had in previous years with Antonio Bowen, Ben Rama, Fornals. How impressed have you been with them? I think it's only you, yourselves and Chelsea that have scored more goals than them in the Premier League this season. Yeah, you just watch them and it's fun. It's it's good fun watching them. They are really they are, they they became a high high intense team, and you can only be a high intense team when you are on the front foot, and that's what they are. Um, and yes, when you want to finish off the situation, you're great. You need top strikers. That's what they obviously have. Uh, um, I like Bowen a lot. So he made his way up right, from was it Hull, uh, if I'm right, uh, and took not too long. Uh, to get there, um, to show exactly what, what kind of player he can be in the Premier League as well, but make it made big steps. Um, Antonio, since I'm in England, I think he played five or six different positions. Some of them were right back. Um, he's obviously a, a, a proper, proper striker. Um, for Mars is back in the in the Spanish national team and had his downs maybe there, but is an incredible player, scored against us, I think, each game, if I'm right. But um, as it was for himself, he's a footballer, can play between the lines, but has the speed to get him behind. Yeah, and Ben Rama is a really exciting one. Eh? So um, <laughs> it was at Brentford, obviously, already one of the crazy front three and is now um, um, obviously a, a proper, a proper, proper um, figure in the in the West Ham offensive play. And then you have on double six, you have two with Rice and Susek, two guys who are a threat up front, passing wise. Susek with the head, um, I think um, Reese with all he has. So shooting, passing, all these kind of things. Incredibly quick um, and, and, and smart um, fullbacks, meanwhile. And they have obviously now the center part, the center half pairing they wanted, uh, brought in Suma and um, have and, uh, Fabianski, uh, a very experienced goalie. So that's a good team. It's a really good team. And now you saw playing this team on, on Thursday, made a couple of changes, um, then they are still a really good team. So uh, that makes a, a, a successful football team. The only problem what West Ham has, what we all have, this league um, is so incredibly good that you have to be on your top every day. Um, not only on Thursday, not on Wednesday, no, on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and whenever as well. And that makes it so exciting. And yeah, the better you get, the more pressure you have to win football games as well. And that's a development as well. We, we all have to go through that. But we know we face an exceptionally well-organized, well-trained, and well-equipped opponent on Sunday.